I am Savage Jim and today I am going to show you how to change the oil on your 2011 to 2014 Ford Mustang GT. Before I go into the actual oil change procedure, let me go over some of the tools that I will be using. First off, I have here an oil catch pan, a bucket to pour the used oil into, and to take to the deliv delivery point where I could send this off to the oil recycling point a jack, a pair of jack stands, a funnel to put in new oil, a turtle creeper, a mechanic seat, some wrenches and tools which I will go over in a little bit more, including sockets, The shop rag, and of course my favorite, hand cleaner with pumice. Some of the hand tools that I will be using for this job are as follows. I will be using an eighth inch drive, ratchet of course, half inch drive ratchet, and a half inch breaker bar. You probably will not need that, but just in case that oil nut is rather stubborn, this could come in rather handy and of course assorted sockets all in metric. Now another thing that I will be using is an eighth inch torque wrench, eighth inch drive ratchet torque wrench because there are some nuts that I will show you underneath that you will have to loosen and torque back to specs. According to the Ford owner's manual for the V6 3.7 liter base model Mustang as well as the V8 5.0 liter GT you should probably conduct your oil change at a maximum of one year or 10,000 miles whichever comes first however if you drive your vehicle in harder conditions you may want to consider a 7500 mile interval or if you drive in extremely hard conditions such, such as racing you may want to consider maybe a 5000 or even a 3000 mile interval the Ford Owner's Manual recommends a 5 weight 20 oil weight as well as it having the seal of approval by the American Petroleum Institute API for a gasoline engine. Here's some more verbiage on it. And so therefore the oil I will be using today is SAE 5 weight 20 with the API certification for gasoline engines and for this time around I am using Royal Purple Synthetic Oil. The owner's manual also recommends that you use an appropriate motorcraft oil filter or another with equivalent performance for your engine's application and as such I have purchased this Wix filter which is designed to fit specifically on the Ford Mustang 5.0 TI VCT engines on the 2011 to the present Mustang GTs. To do it yourself, one of the things that you will need to do first is to jack up your vehicle so you will be able to crawl underneath the engine and get out the oil drain plug. To do that, you will need a jack and jack stand. And as you can see, I have positioned the jack approximately where the jack point is located. Uh, let me show you exactly what this jack point looks like from the underside. This is the rocker molding of the car. And going underneath of the car, you can see this rectangular cutout. This is the jack point. And the specific point where you put your jack cup to lift the vehicle is on this rather thin bar right here. Prior to jacking the vehicle up, the first thing you will need to do is make sure your vehicle is secure. And just to make sure it doesn't roll away, on a manual transmission, always put the parking brake on or even on automatic as well just to be doubly safe and if you have a manual transmission go ahead and put it into gear it doesn't matter which one just make sure that your vehicle is secured the next thing to do now is to set up your jack to line it up and place the cup so that it goes right up into the jack point what I like to do is I like to take off the handle and press this up a couple of times by hand just like this and what that does is it raises up the arm and I'm just going to reach underneath to make sure and feel that it's going into the jack point and adjust it as it goes up. 
until I feel a contact. There it is. Then, I'll take the handlebar and install it and proceed to jack the vehicle up. Now crawling under the car, I do apologize a lot for the shakiness and uh, lack of focus here. But I'm coming up to the engine oil pan and I am staring at the oil plug nut. I have here my ratchet and it is equipped with a 15 millimeter socket. That's what I will need to loosen this. And I'm going to set this to loosen. I already have my my old catch pan already positioned as best as I could to get it. And there I should loosen that. It's already starting to drip. This is the messy part and that's why I have the shop rags and the uh, hand cleaner solution. Let's go ahead and loosen that by hand. And this is the messy part. Well, it's only one of the messy parts, but hey, if you're going to do it yourself, you got to expect to get dirty. I'm just going to go ahead and let this drain. The, the 5.0 liter TIVCT modeler engine holds 8 quarts of oil. So I have to dump 8 quarts of oil out of the oil pan into my catch pan and take all that to the recycle. While I'm letting the oil drip out, what we'll need to do also to get at the oil filter is I'm looking at the engine under shield, the engine windshield. We'll need to loosen this because the oil filter is tucked away underneath. Uh, here we are. Right here we have a 9mm nut. We'll need to loosen that. Uh, more shakiness, I apologize. But I don't have a steady platform to hold my camera while I do this. And there is another one. Oh, where is it? I had it. Oh, here it is, right here. Okay, more on this later on. It says 9 Newton beaners. And we'll have to tighten that, this nut back up to that spec, that torque spec, once we're through with our procedure. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen these right now. So we can get the shield down. And there is a third nut right here. That's the one I was loosening. And so we need to get this third nut right here as well. There's not a lot of room to work, so it's really hard to show clearly on video what I'm doing. Alright, before I drop the windshield, it will just simply fold down once all three of these nuts are loosened. I do want to come back up here to the oil pan. And I see that it has pretty much dripped empty. So I'm going to take the nut and go ahead and put it in. Put it back into the old drain hole. And tighten that because that is as much oil as I am going to get back out of this engine. So, the next step is to drop this engine shield. Uh, let's see here, it is. that's the nut that I've slightly uh, left it still tightened in. Sorry, I 
need to come back to show my work but so little space underneath the engine that there's not much room to record okay that is the engine wind guard and it just simply folds down just like that and here is the oil filter located on the driver's side of the engine uh, we'll need to loosen this. This next tool that I'm using here is a strap style oil filter holder and remover. I've positioned my oil drip pan up here underneath the filter as best as I could. This is going to be a really messy affair and there's no way about that because oil is going to hit this piece of the structural member, uh, probably some onto this uh, E-Pass unit here, electronic power assist unit, and that uh, that steering spindle. So we'll have to get our shop rags ready when we, when this thing comes loose. Ah, oh, there it is. Only had to torque it down very little. So let's go ahead and start to loosen. And yep, all is landing right directly on the uh, engine windshield guard, and then from that dripping into the oil pan. But there's nothing we can do about that. Let's go ahead and loosen up that oil filter the rest of the way. Oh, what a mess! But hey, all in the fun of do it yourself. Just think of what the oil technicians have to do whenever they change out your car oil. You know, they probably have to put up with this kind of mess on an everyday basis over uh, hundreds of vehicles. Before I install a new filter, what I like to do is I like to prime it. And this is how I do it. Simply take a funnel and pour some oil into the funnel to... Oops, I put too much to prime the filter so that's okay if I put a little bit too much I'll just let this let it seep in and I'll wipe out the mess with all already priming the filter I like to take some of the excess oil and wipe it on the oil ring seal just like that to ensure that I, I knock off whatever dirt might have accumulated on it and also to help ensure that when I put this on back onto the engine block at the oil filter installation point it does seal properly nice and tight Okay, I am crawling back underneath the car to install the new filter and I'm screwing it onto the oil filter point right here on the driver's side of the engine block. Some of the oil that I primed the filter with is, is coming out, but that's okay. Let me grab one of these rags here and just give it a little wipe. And all you really need to do is screw it on finger tight. You really don't need to tighten it that much. But if you're, if you want to be absolutely certain, what you can do is take your filter holder and turn it in about an eighth of a turn just to be doubly certain. I was mentioning earlier that the engine windscreen and the screws that held it in place required a 9 newton meter torque specification and as you can see over here on this conversion chart that I'm using approximately 9.81 newton meters equals 86.76 inch pounds so on the torque wrench that I'm going to be using which is set for inch pounds I'll have to set it a little bit less than 80 inch pounds so what I did is I probably set it at about 75 inch pounds and that should be good enough alright tightening the screws back down and we're going to torque these down to 9 newton meters There you go. That little click indicates that I have reached the torque specification and that I should stop turning the wrench. And 
Looks like once again. And now for a third one. All right, now the windshield is in place. We are ready now to install all back into the engine. On the 5.0 liter TIVCT modular engines, this is where your oil fill up cap is. Notice that on the cap, it does specify the recommended oil weight 5W20. These engines require 8 quarts of oil, so make sure you have enough oil with you whenever you're doing an oil change. Let's simply take off the cap, install the funnel, and I am using two 4 quart jugs of oil, which I'm going to fill the engine up with. Before you start up the engine after changing your oil, the best thing to do is always make sure that you have the proper amount of oil before you turn the key. The dipstick is located on the driver's side of the car and it is Look at right there, that yellow stick. Simply pull that out and let's have to make sure that oil is getting into the stick. Yes there is. Let's give that a wipe off so we can make sure what the level is. Dip the stick back into the engine. Looks like there's plenty of oil there. So long as it's above, well actually you do want it right at that top hole or somewhere in between the top hole and the bottom hole. You don't want to overfill. That could cause damage to the engine just as much as too little oil would cause damage to the engine. Once you've finished changing your oil, you will need to reset your oil life counter. The way to do that is to press the setup key and read the message board underneath the tachometer. Just keep on pushing the setup key until you come to this, oil life at so and so percent and uh, on mine I've already reset it but to reset the oil life counter just simply uh, press the reset button hold reset button until the percentage reads 100 percent oil life set to 100 percent now the engine is ready for startup Excellent. No knocking noise. That means the uh, lifters and uh, the cams are getting enough oil in them. Let's go ahead and do a quick little drive around the block. There we go folks, that is how to change the oil in your Ford Mustang GT 2011 to the present. Once you've finished changing your oil, you will need to reset your oil life counter. The way to do that is to press the setup key and read the message board underneath the tachometer. Just keep on pushing the setup key until you come to this, oil life at so and so percent. And uh, on mine, I've already reset it, but to reset the oil life counter, just simply uh, press the reset button, hold reset button, until the percentage reads 100%. All life set to 100%. Now the engine is ready for startup. Alright, 
Excellent. No knocking noise. That means the uh, lifters and uh, the cams are getting enough oil in them. Let's go ahead and do a quick little drive around the block. There we go, folks. That is how to change the oil in your Ford Mustang GT 2011 to the present.